Because they basically kind of switched around how your how you could increase your stats for endgame stuff. Because you would have to stack uh, Nephilim buffs. Uh -oh. You'd have to stack Nephilim buffs to to really increase your damage um, in the original game, and the Paragon points would increase your gold and item find. And in this one, they kind of change it around so that the Nephilim buff gives you more damage. Um, still, but the Paragon uh, points that you get, you can put into stuff that would increase the damage that the old Nephilim stuff would do. Um, so it's a really cool remix and a really great way to add replay value. Because, I mean, it feels like going from that game to this one, it, it almost feels like you're playing a brand new, an entirely brand new game. Um, even though you're running through the same story tropes, etc. Um, they also, including adding a new character, they also added new skills for the old characters, and they remixed um, how you get them as you level up. So while it's it's vaguely similar, the addition of new skills um, kind of really helps change the way the game plays. Uh, significantly enough that somebody who is more or less you know thoroughly bored of the original game can still find something completely new and awesome to bring them back to the game. It's really good. Yeah, blow up. I like the fact that the enemies explode and then uh, other enemies come out of them. Uh... And they, they even mix that up, because they mix up the type of enemies that come out of them. Um, it, it, like, the ones you've, you've been seeing me kill, uh, you know, the little worm clusters come out of them. But, um, if you get later into it, uh, you'll run into ones where imps come out of it. And imps are, if you read the, the lore and the... The bestiary that you get in this game is kind of a pared down. I mean, you get it for some enemies, but not all of them. Um, imps are basically um, abandoned demon babies, so it's like, oh, well, did I just kill a pregnant chick because a bunch of, you know, abandoned pregnant demon babies jumped out of her? <laughs> it, and then, is that that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> Alright, we've done enough clearing. Let's, uh, Let's get in here and rob some crypts. This will be rough. This will be, rough. This will be Sparta! Uh, shit, this way. Whee! What you got, what you got, what you got? Nothing I want to use. Let's say at level 20, I think I'll go back to town, salvage some gear that I've picked up, and then, uh use the blacksmith to uh, build some new weapons in this game. Um, they did a bunch of cool stuff with how you how you get weapons in the, or weapons and armor in this game because you can pick them up, you can buy them or with the with the blacksmith mechanic that they introduced you can make them which is really cool. Um, and they didn't just set it as, here's a guy who can make stuff for you. They set it as, here's a guy who has a personality and will travel with you, who can make stuff for you, who you can also train and level up. And they, ch they made it a lot easier to train him in this game compared to the other game, because in the other game you would have to pick up rest, uh, not recipes, you'd have to pick up basically training books off of enemies. And the, the pickup rate was like kind of oh shit. The pickup rate was kind of sporadic, so you would go, you know, really long times without getting the stuff you needed, and it was really dependent on what part of the game you were at. So if you were if you had passed the difficulty where you could pick them up, or if you passed the act in the difficulty, you couldn't get them anymore, uh, which is kind of garbage. Um, in this one, you just you just pay to train them up, and uh, that's a much I think that's a, that's a much better way to do it because yeah, it's simplifying it and it's making it easier to do it. But I mean, you're you're gonna you're 
the way the game originally worked is if you were playing on the normal difficulty, you're going to go past uh, the level of the stuff that you're trying to get before you get um, the recipes you need or the whatever you need to... Oh, I haven't done this one yet. Before you get the stuff you need to make effective items for the level that you're at. So I guess it kind of... I guess it encourage multiple playthroughs if you want to look at it that way but it also it's like you know some people are only going to play through this game once no matter how good you make the game and no matter how much replay value you actually put in the game some people are only going to play through the game once so why not tune it up so that they can level the guy up as much as possible so that they can continue to craft stuff because honestly, you know, when when it boils down to it, if you can get the guy, if you can get your your crafting skills up all the way, not immediately, but on your first playthrough, that then you have, and then you know you have that for the next playthrough you do with another person, that's going to give you incentive to play through the game again. I mean, that's going to give you incentive to be able to say, hey, you know, I've got this awesome leveled up blacksmith I put all my money into, and he can build all this stuff. Oh wow! I can play. I can play with another character using his skills and all the stuff I've still picked up. That's awesome. I mean, you know, that's that's gonna make. I mean, that would make me want to go through the game. Pick it up. There you go. That would make me want to go through the game again. All right. The fact that there is a jar of souls event here leads me to believe that this is not the crypt we're looking for. These aren't the droid clip crypts, you're looking crip. Crip crip. Crippity crip croup. Uh, what do we got? We got anything else I can upgrade to? There we go. There's something here. Oh, that's just a effect. Let's see, what do we got? Oh, maybe this is it. Maybe it just led me through another thing right here in the beginning, which would be, you know, cool. Alright. Nope, that's the end. My only friend, the end. Of our elaborate plans, the end. Of safety and surprise. Did I just go Shatner with that? God damn it. Fucking Shatner! He's the last Star Trek original Star Trek dude left alive. That's uh, kind of sobering. And he's like 90 years old and he looks like he's 40. I want to look that good when I'm 90. 8 billion years old. I mean, he looks awesome for a 90 year old. Oh, burn it all down. Yeah, level 20. Bitches ain't shit. Burn it, burn it, burn it. Oh, I want an experience pool. Oh, and there's there's uh, bad enemies here. What do we got? Uh, stuff for elemental arrow. Oh, cool! I do have another one here. Uh, passive buffs that you equip and radically changes. Ow, my shoulder radically changes the way that your character can play. Uh, let's see. As long as there are no enemies, hatred is increased by 25. Killed by a health glow whenever you use vault. 60% movement speed. This one is primary skills generate an additional four hatred. That's a good. That's a good kind of passive buff to use for now. Because that means when I use my uh, rapid fire uses hatred, my bola shot gives me additional hatred, which is one of my uh, resources that I can use. Um, so having something that increases that more will give me the chance to use rapid fire more often. Which is a cool mechanic that you kind of have to... I mean, every game with any type of resource, spendable resource that you use to attack, you have to manage it. But it gives you interesting ways to change how you manage it, and it gives you interesting ways to basically manage it and micromanage how your character plays. Which is cool. 
And there's so many different skills that you can use, and they're all viable in one way or another. And they, the, you'll you'll see people play radically differently based on, you know, play style, etc. And the fact that there's so many different skills, and even changing one skills one skill c can completely change how your character plays is a really cool way to add replayability value with a character as well. Because let's say you hit level 70 and you're in adventure mode going through all the Paragon bullshit. And you're just like, hmm, I don't really... I'm getting bored of how this character plays. Instead of playing another character and, you know, having to go through the story mode again or starting from scratch, you can just switch over a couple skill sets and see if you like that better. And then, you know, spend time doing that, which is really cool. So definitely outdid themselves on this Reaper of Souls expansion. And I mean, you know, it was kind of... I wouldn't say expected, but it was... It was they had they, they there's a big selling point on the box of this game that it's an expansion but it comes with the full version of Diablo 3 and it's like well no shit it does cuz it's it's an expansion not a you know DLC you can't even you can't even buy it as a DLC if you own the original Diablo 3 uh and But it makes sense because you don't you don't want to sell you know your your complete remix without selling the original game with it because if you just bought the the remix I mean you would know what the hell's going on etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, shit man we fucking with me. Yeah. All right, we got our hit you back up. We can burn them now. Burn them down. Burn them down with anger. 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 Kill murder. There we go. Oh, wow, there's still more. As soon as these guys are gonna get cleared out, I'm gonna go back to town here. Run away. Yeah. Taught you a lesson. All right, town portal. Here we go. It grieves me to tell you this, but your apprentice has died. He dead. Oh boy. Hope for the worst and you will not be disappointed. Thank you for the news. All right. Salvage, 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 salvage everything. Da -na 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 -na. We're gonna get rid of it. All right. So when you salvage items, magic, rare, and actually normal items in this game now um, that you don't use, it gives you um, repair materials, or it gives you crafting materials that you can use to craft new and different weapons that you can use. All right, you get a quiver. Really nothing in the whole level 20 range. Here we go. This will uh, increase our stats. Actually, not very well. What do we got? I guess that's a little better. And the fact that it's got two sockets in it's going to help us here. Alright, what do we got? Journeyman cap. What do I have on right now? Level 13 legendary. Yeah, I'm not going to be replacing that anytime soon, I don't think. Uh... Your options for shit. Your options for items that you can craft for your character uh, increase quite a bit uh, once you get further into the game. In fact, they actually kind of really stagger their way up really well, which is cool. I've got some Let's right see. Good bunch of things for you this fine day. Sell that. Uh, let's socket some gems. I think I have one gem. Oh, I have two chipped rubies. It's going to give me a total of 12 extra strength, which is going to help with other stuff. Oh, hey. Uh, you can also level up your or your follower, which you get three of in the game, uh, can level up as well. Um, and you can assign them skills and give them items to make them uh, better. Uh, let's see. Increase your resource regeneration when your life is low. I can back near my... Yeah, I like that one. 
we're kind of designing we're going to be using this guy for the entire playthrough because he, he kind of operates 